Meet Jackson. Jackson is a warrior from a Maasai tribe in the town of Enkite, just north of the boundaries of Amboseli National Park in southern Kenya. The Maasai are pastoral nomads, thought to have lived on this land for over a thousand years. Jackson's family's main source of food, and only source of income, is the cows and goats that they keep. Over the last two centuries, Jackson's ancestors lost their best dry season rangeland to European settlers, who acquired it for agricultural purposes and were removed from national parks that were once their homelands for the benefits of tourists. In late 2013, I went to meet Jackson and his family to see for myself the effect of these changes. I want to see why it is that although the Maasai have inhabited these lands for millennia, they're now facing threats that could spell the end of their magnificent <laughs> culture forever. To assist me with this journey, I was joined by two of my close friends, Tori Longdon, a musician and expert in choral tradition, and Poppy Gilbert, a biologist who I'm hoping can shed some light on why the rains here are becoming more erratic and much less frequent. Why is water a problem now when you've lived here for so long? Because of the um, climate as well, it's been changing, of course, a long time. The climate was uh, the rain season is done very soon, and then we get rain, we get water from the rain, from the swamp. And now the climate has been changed. The, the rain season will be late. How far, how far do you walk every day? Is, uh, in the water. In the water. The water, the, the water near that you have that, like a parcel of 120 kilometers. And that's for the whole of the dry season. The only water you can get is 120 kilometers. Yeah. In 2009, the worst happened. The drought that the people of Inquito had been living in fear of each year finally arrived. Jackson explained to Tori just what this meant for the people of Inquito. Plus, and then right now in 2009, kill animals died, and then we leave some other people. They don't have any cows, and others they don't have anything to support the children in school. With their only source of income and all of their savings dying before their eyes, Inquito looked to Nairobi in a desperate plea for help, but none came. Father died, then children fell because of there was no food and it was other people to be killed myself because I have no any idea and what I gonna do if all my cows died. Did they kill themselves? Yeah. And this was no over exaggeration. With no cows, the families here had no income with which to support their children. And Jackson told me just how far these effects spread. If you go to school, yeah. if Yonder keeps going to school, yeah. then she can apply for a job and have a career. Yeah. yeah. But if there's another drought, then maybe she can't really. Go to school as well from now. Uh, from I say he can go now because I can support her to go to school. And if she doesn't go to school, yeah. What happens to her when she grows up? Just be married and then be taken to campus. No one, no one can. He does not can. He cannot find her work to do. So if she can't go to school, yeah. This is Yonder's half-sister, Panina, who is the same age. She doesn't go to school. 
The Maasai lifestyle has supported their families for over a thousand years. But with the advent of modern medicine, a much higher proportion of the children are surviving. This is great news, but the lands allocated to them by the government can no longer support this growing population. In order to survive, some of the children must leave the village and find work. But in order to do so, they need qualifications. <laughs> and how much water do you drink a day? I form, for me, I drink one, one cup and I drink. The Maasai only drink one cup of water a day. Their bodies are accustomed to it, I guess, but I've tried to drink as little as possible <laughs> because I feel guilty every time I have a cup of water. But I just feel really sick. And we're recommended to drink three liters of water a day when we're out here. I've been in the Ambazelli for three days now and I'm really struggling. I had no idea of the effect that thirst can have on your brain. But I'm just so thirsty and so hungry and so blisteringly hot that I can't concentrate for more than two minutes at a time. <coughs> I find it impossible to imagine how kids living in these conditions day after day without water can learn what they need to learn to get a decent job and get them out of poverty with this amount of thirst every single day of their lives. As if this weren't enough, there's a danger that new legislation currently being considered by the Kenyan government will force the country's Maasai out of parts completely. With the intention of protecting wildlife and the precious tourist trade, these changes would cut Nkito off from their only fallback option. In times of drought, they wouldn't even be able to make the trip to Lake Amboseli in search of water. If this continues, if nothing changes, the community will have to move on. Where are you? If you don't get a well, <laughs> then you have to move. I am born here, so I don't know where I go. There's only one place the Inquito family could go. Kibera. The largest urban slum in Africa is situated on the southern edge of Nairobi. Life expectancy is 30 years old, and one in five children do not live to see their fifth birthday. It's hard to imagine any form of this magnificent culture surviving in such circumstances. I just can't get my head around the fact that my friends in 2014 threatened by death because of a lack of water. But amongst all the concern, there is hope. A few years ago, Jackson met Alison, the founder of British charity AVIF. Alison is hoping to raise funds to build a well to serve the people of Anquito and the surrounding communities. Access to a year-round water supply would spell the end of sleepless nights for Jackson, wondering if the rains will come this year. Safe in the knowledge that the cows will not die, parents will be able to send their children to school and their children in turn will be able to support them. A well would allow the community to continue living sustainably on the land that their ancestors have inhabited for thousands of years. They would be taught to maintain it and manage it as a commercial resource for tourists. But there's a catch. Inquito sits on the ancient lava fields of Kilimanjaro and to get to the water it requires drilling down 280 metres through volcanic rock. And this doesn't come cheap. People that I've met here, my friends, just 
just have to sit around and see if rain will come. While the cows die. To see if... Well, just doesn't even bear thinking about it. Sort yourself out. These people deserve a basic human right like everyone else.